So this thing came in the mail a couple of days ago. Pretty cool, right? Um, I wasn't planning on buying one of these, but um, after doing all the research on my last YouTube video, I was definitely thinking that the play could be a nice insert into my live set. It's very capable. It was a good price for all the features and frankly, just a you know real solid build quality. So I missed out on a really good deal at $100 off at, I don't know, Guitar Center or something like that. But then I saw the Play Plus winning for $110 off on a unit that was returned to the store. This thing supposedly is going to go up in price, um, you know, it's $799 right now. Who knows if it's going to go up to $900 or $1,000. bucks? So for under $700, bucks, I figured that was too good of a deal, and I picked it up. Um, I'm not sure that I'm impressed with the synths on this thing yet. I haven't messed with them. Some of the videos I've seen weren't super impressive on the presets and the sounds. But it was too good of a deal to pass up, so I went and plunked down my money. So I've got a full review in the works, but that's several weeks away, and I need to spend some time really digging into this thing. My first thoughts, though, is that I definitely really like it. Um, I'm definitely keeping it. The day I got it, I was so excited. I went and bought a 256 gig SD card, probably way more than I need, but I want to pack this thing just jam-packed full of samples and I played with it the first night for about four hours when I was done I ordered the the case for it so that I can take it on the road with me um I'm definitely going to gig with it for sure so one other quick mention another thing that I picked up are these um candy cables candy cords I think they are called I'm going to put a link in the description a pretty good price. These are really cool looking angle to straight. Um, they seem to be pretty quiet also. I've got an on cable from Walmart and that thing kind of sucks. It's really noisy. It's probably not shielded. Those, I kept the play and my Nord in the same spot and switched out the cable. Bam, noise gone. So I think those things are pretty good. All right, with that out of the way, um, I figured I'd go over a couple of things that I came across or that I thought about as I was using this. It's a somewhat intuitive instrument, but I did need to open the manual a bit to figure some things out. There's some things on here that definitely aren't the easiest to figure out. And this video isn't really going to dig deep into any of that stuff. There's plenty of videos out there that show you all the little tips on how to you know set your samples and do all this stuff but I thought what I would do is kind of go over how you can use this thing to create patterns and do your pattern chaining to create songs so these tips are going to be kind of situated around that idea so the first tip that I have is that um, let's go to a blank pattern over here that's the pattern you know, switch out to the patterns using that button there. So I got a blank pattern and you start off with a 16, if we select all these, you start off with a 16 beat track length. It's real easy to switch to 64 and that's my first recommendation is that anytime you start off with something, hit that 64 beats, hit save, boom, now you got a 64 beat pattern. If you are at 16, it's really limited on what you can do. You know, that's really just one measure. If each of these is 16 notes, that's, you know, one, two, three, four, boom, one measure. Not a whole lot of music. And again, if you're going to go back to this pattern mode and you want to use those 16 beat patterns to make a song, you're going to pretty much use this full 128 pad grid to make a song that is four minutes long at 120 bpm and it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to do that so this is a little bit of an easier way and if you start with that pattern or if that if you start with that where everything's at 64 it just gives you a lot more room to work with 
it does take a little bit more time setting stuff up. So say, for instance, we got a base note here. Say, for instance, we, we put a four on the floor in this track. All you got to do to basically copy that four times is you hit the shift and you just do press, boom, press, boom, press, boom. Now, each of these, this is the first 16, this is the second 16, the third, and the fourth. And if I go through and I play, you know, it's going to play through a full 64 bar loop. The next tip that I wanted to kind of go over is how I've got patterns organized on here. And I've kind of treated these quadrants. You can see you've got eight here, basically, and you've got this nice etched line that breaks everything up. I've been kind of treating each of these like a folder or a container, and each one has a slightly different variation of what's in it. So for instance, for this song, I've got like intro and outro group kind of here. And then here I've got, this is set up for a 12 bar blues pattern. So 12 bar blues is one, four, five. So I've got basically one, four, and five right here. And then this is kind of like a bridge section. I only have one choice there. Um, but depending on how you want to set your song up, if you think about it logically that way and then set each one of these up, if you get your song halfway done or you get bored with it and then you want to come back in two months, you're going to kind of have a much better idea of what's there because you're going to have everything broken up. If you just sit here and copy, you know, pattern after pattern after pattern and just kind of put them wherever, when you get back to it, you're not going to remember what's there and it's going to be a lot harder. So another way you can do this is, you know, if you just have, for instance, an A, B section. So you could have intro section A and B and then have all these different A and B variations that you've got in each one. Another one is the typical um, verse, verse, chorus, verse, bridge, verse, chorus also a famous Genesis album. Not, not quite my tempo. You know, you can do that way too. So you can basically have intro, verse, chorus, bridge. And then you can select from those when you build your song, basically. So once you get a pattern set up, let's, for instance, just maybe go to this pattern right here and we'll see what's in here. Pretty simple beat, nothing fancy. Um, if you start with that as your main beat and get just something, uh, kind of a template set up, it's real easy to just hit this and then just do a copy and paste. Boom, copy and paste. Copy, paste. copy, paste. Now I've made all kinds of additional copies of that single pattern. And if I want to go into each of these, I can go into each one of these and go to here. And I can use this fill option. I can use the randomize and go through some of the different things. If I want to, you know, select my tracks and, and choose what I want to do for the different randomization or the chance, basically, if I want to do that, play around with it, see what it does. And if I go too far, I can always go back here and discard this and, and take that original one and copy it back over the top of that. This does have an undo redo and it is fairly deep, but it's only it is limited. So you can undo a little bit. But once you get too far into the weeds, if you don't like what you're doing, great, you can abandon it. You got your original pattern here and you can go back and mess around with it again. The other thing that's cool about this is when you set your original pattern up and you do that copy, you know, depending on how you're building your song, if you're if you start with the verse and then you want to go to the chorus, well, great, you've got your verse, now your chorus. So you can take your chorus piece and, you know, if you want to add, uh, you know, add more um, bass notes, for instance. So this is our bass line. If we want to add more bass notes, you know, I can go in here and add more bass notes. I can take out hi-hat sections if I want. And super easy to do. And now I got a verse and a chorus. And then I hit that save. Boom, it changed it. I go back to here 
Now I've got my verses, I've got my choruses that I can pick from. So one thing I found out about this is that if um, I go to the pattern and say I want to mute a layer or two or three or solo a layer, it's not going to save that with, um, with your track when you save your pattern. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Which is to be expected because these are kind of like master control type options. No way. But what I was trying to figure out is can I set up a blank pattern? And the answer to that is yes. So if we go to a new pattern here, okay, there, there's nothing in it. It's that darker blue. Okay, we select that and we go here. I got nothing there. All right. And if I go here and go back, again, nothing there. I haven't made any changes. But as soon as I go here and as soon as I hit save and then go back to patterns, boom, now I got a pattern. But I want to make that a blank pattern. So I go back and go here and just delete that. And then maybe, maybe we do this too and we go boom and make that 64 steps. Hit save. Boom, now I have a blank pattern that I can use. And this works great in a couple of different spots. You know, if you want a break in your song, you can copy that into your song. This is my song bar that I've got set up and I can copy that down and then I can change the track length. If I don't want 64, I can go down to two beats or a full measure or 16 or beats or whatever you want to do. And it works great for a break. It also works great at the end of a song. So when you get to the end of your chain here, it's going to always go back to the beginning. It doesn't stop. So if you're playing another instrument, if you're playing a synth or a guitar or something like that, um, you're going to have to be super quick on the draw to stop it right at the last beat. Unless you copy one of these in here. If I take this and go boom and copy that to the end of my song, now I got time. That last note plays here. Maybe I do a little diddly on the guitar, strum a chord or something, let it ring out hit that play to stop everything and no problems. So what we've been doing so far is essentially creating a songwriting template. You know, you've got your different containers or different folders here, each with different sections. Again, this one, we got intros and outros. We got one, four, five, and then we got like bridge sections and our blank patches here. So when you want to set up a song, it's real easy now because all you have to do, and if I want to set up a song, I can pick any space here and say I want to do something and let's use both these intros. So I'm going to go boom, copy that over here. And then maybe I want to use this intro piece. Boom, copy that over here. And now I want to go into my um, 12 bar blues. So I'm going to go one and one and four and one. And then that's five and four together, and then back to one, and maybe we do a couple of ones, and then we do an outro, and we go to our blank patch, and boom. Now you've got a full song, and I mean, what did that take? Less than a minute. Because <laughs> you've got, you're just following a basic, you know, song template. You took the time and had the fun, frankly, with this thing. This thing is a lot of fun of creating all those patterns that you can use. You set this up. Now you play through this and say you don't like a section, you know, say, you know, I don't this. This is too busy for that for that first. We did two intros here. So this one right here, it's too busy for that first um, one, four, five piece. So instead, now let's do this and bring this one in. So now I've just I've got this pool to choose from that I can pull in and out as I want. I can I can go to the beginning. I can, you know, I can hit the play and go through my song. If I get to a, I mean, you know, you can play guitar with it, play synth with it, whatever you want to do. You get to a part you don't like. Boom. Swap it out. Try it again. See if that works. Doesn't work. Try another one and then get it to the way you want it. And it just makes song creation so much easier. So as you can see here, you know, I've got two songs in here. We had the original song that I set up with. And the nice thing with the play is that 
you know, you hit this shift and you hit the play chain, okay? It plays, it keeps going through here, and as soon as it gets to the end, it goes to the next bar. And then as soon as it gets here, it goes back. Well, that's an advantage if you want to put more songs in here, because like I've got two here, but I could just skip one of these pads and start here and create another song. And then maybe that goes to here, and then I skip another pad and start here and create another song. And if you've got these pools set up, you know, you can build your first song and then say you want to bring in some new samples. Cool. So all you got to do then is basically go into the samples and you go to the delete unused samples. You know, this song is set up. It's, it's good. It's golden. It's how you want to play it live. You hit the delete unused samples. It frees up space. Now you go back to your load sample packs and you go in here and you check some other things out and load some new, new samples. Delete all of these because you're not going to use them again because you've got this all set up and go through the whole process again. You know, start with your intro sections, your verses, your choruses, whatever, and set these up. And then you can set up your second song and your third song and your fourth song. And this works really great because while the having all this in here is great, if you have to load it from the SD card, it takes a lot of time. So if you only have one song per basically program that you've set up or project that you've set up, every time you want to load another song, you're going to have to wait a minute and you're going to have to sit here and fiddle and go to files and go to open project and go, I, oh, shoot, I don't want to save that. You know, no, I don't want to save that. Which project do I got? Um, you know, that's going to take time. Your audience is going to get bored. If you've got multiple songs here, you play one, you hit the stop when you get to the end. Hopefully people applause, you acknowledge the applause, you, you know, you go to your next song and you hit the, the shift play to play your chain again. And then you do that three or four or five times in a row. And then if you need to load up a new project, you can maybe start a song on another groove box if you got a second groove box, or maybe you play, start playing a song on a synth that you don't need drums for. And go in here and load while you're doing that. And then when you're done with that, now you got another four or five or ten, however many songs set up in your next project. And you can basically go through and you do that once or twice or three times. And you got a full set. So it's really great for doing that. So the last thing I want to do is to acknowledge both Ben Jordan and Red Means Recording on their excellent videos on the Play Plus. And both those videos helped me make the decision to buy this. They both kind of mentioned one thing that's interesting, and that is that, that there was some talk about whether or not this groove box could specifically help people to finish songs. And I think it can. Um, writing a song versus setting up a bunch of patterns, it's a kind of a different skill set for each and a different way of thinking. But if you work on your patterns and use your folders or your containers like how I was showing, it's so easy to just take those and then just pop them into a song. And if you don't like it, pop stuff out and, and put it back until you get a song that you like. So that's it for today. Be sure and hit that like and subscribe if you like music gear reviews, tips and tricks. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the other side of the mountain.